Fairy Tale. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Allie on Crooked Nature. I want to take a minute to remind you to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell if you can. It would be awesome and it will really help my channel grow. Um, we are taking a minute today to talk about this really pretty syndapsis uh, trubii moonlight, or also known as the sterling silver syndapsis. It is a very pretty plant. It is slow growing. It's got super thick leaves. It's very lush. I've actually trimmed this one back already one time and uh, so that it would bush out a bit more and it really has. It's done, it did a great job. I did notice uh, that just like other pothos, if, if it is allowed to vine and go down, its leaves seem to get smaller as it goes. The size is noticeably different, you know, quite a, quite a bit, quite a bit smaller. <laughs> um, and I'm betting that if I put this on a pole or in a hanging basket that has a, a hang, you know, suspension on it that I can put this up on there and I bet you the leaves will increase in size. Now this guy here has been, it's, it's one of my favorite plants. In fact, I gave a, a, a very pretty vase with cuttings from this in it to a lady and I mean, you'd have thought I just gave her the most beautiful roses she had ever seen. And like, she was so excited and, and she's like, and it's not gonna die right. Like I can plant these eventually. <laughs> and she was just so happy to get like a real plant. And, and we forget about our friends and stuff like that. We don't think about it too much. But if you have a lot of plants, you, you take a lot of cuttings or you need to because your plant is overgrowing, you end up realizing how much people really do enjoy getting plants from you uh, as time goes on. Now, this guy is pest prone. They're, they're pretty, pretty tough. They're real thick. It doesn't seem to affect its growth. But Jesus, the mealybugs. Oh, the mealybugs. It's it's like I'm a magnet. All the mealybugs must come to me because I have the most juice in my leaves. And, and that's totally what happens. Um, so this guy has had two showers since yesterday because I found an out outbreak on him, on him. And I am super upset about it because I have plants that I don't want to lose to mealybugs. I really, really don't. So this is going to get treated today with this awesome um, systemic granule over here, which is a house plant. It's, it's for house plant. It's for it's a it's a pesticide. You put it in your dirt. You mix it in. You water your plant, and over about the next ten days, it's going to absorb that that pesticide. It's the granules are going to break down in the water, and it's going to go up into there, and it's going to make this plant toxic to anything that eats it, as far as an insect. Most house plants are already toxic. <laughs> to your pets and children and yourself. So don't don't eat things unless you know for sure, like maybe you grew strawberries in your house and you're like, you can have a strawberry. That's something else, that's something entirely different. But it's gonna make this toxic to the pests that wanna eat it and they're just gonna die. So they're not gonna be able to reproduce and, and go on about their way and, and get on to other plants and stuff like that. Uh, I really have enjoyed having this plant. I gotta say, I, I thought I'm like, it's a bunch of hype, but I'm, no. I really do like it. It is really pretty looking. It needs a lot of light. Uh, I wouldn't put it near a window. I bet it'll burn. There's a good chance that it would burn because it's it's just it's fleshy and thick like that. And I don't know how tough it really is. Maybe I could acclimatize it to some light. I don't know. Maybe I can't. I don't want to lose it. So maybe that's experiment for another pot after after this gets too long and I can't handle it being so long and I have to cut it and do something. Uh, we'll see what happens there. They're absolutely gorgeous, though. I really do recommend these plants for somebody who is, is inclined towards aesthetically pleasing plants. This guy is beautiful. Other people are going to think it's beautiful. You're going to get compliments on it. it. It really is hardy, and it takes some neglect. I don't water this guy very often, and it does really, really well. And it it's like most synapses. If you overwater it, it's going to root rot and it's going to die. Uh, it's just, just what's going to happen. This has got some pretty decent root growth going on in its pot finally. And it, it didn't, when I got it, it was rooted pretty well, but it was obviously just recently rooted cuttings. But they, like I said, there was quite a few in here. And so I was pretty happy with the pot and I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, the pest thing is the biggest thing I would have to say to watch for. Because like right here, I'm going to have a disfigured leaf. And that's, that's part of that. It's part of getting getting bugs. And you're like, oh, I got pests from this one plant that I bought from this other thing. And it came from a nursery or greenhouse and it had stuff all over it. Or I got it from a box box store and it just, I, I should have just, you know, taken care of it, taken care of it when I got it. And I didn't. And it had something wrong with it. That happens. It also, you can also get pests, aphids, 
mealybugs, uh, spider mites, all kinds of stuff, just from walking around outside your own house and accidentally brushing against a bush or something like that. You can also get it from your oranges, bananas, onions, and potatoes, and other, other vegetables that you bring into your house, believe it or not. They can have mealybugs and other aphids and stuff on them, and you can end up with an outbreak because you have vegetables and fruits in your house. And it just happens. So it's easier to take care of our plants properly and just not worry about the pests because you know you've taken care of your plant properly and even if it gets something on it well it's going to be fine because if you're like me you've used something on it that's going to make sure that those pests go away and they're not going to affect other other stuff um or maybe you have predatory bugs in your house or you're using all natural stuff i have neem oil i make my own horticult horticultural spray um pretty much everybody does and you can find tons of recipes online and how to use uh, essential oils to you know combat pests and stuff like that and they work they actually do work really really well i use all of that in combination with this because i don't like to use the systemic as often as it says to you just because i'm like i don't want to pump my plants full of toxins <laughs> that might sound weird but i'm like i'm killing it you're not killing it though it's something that doesn't hurt it at all it just hurts the bugs but i'm just like that i want to not give it extra stuff if possible. I'm like, giving you fertilizer is one thing, but giving you a uh, toxic, something that technically is toxic, it kind of bothers me. I'm like, these are my planty friends. I don't want to have to deal with the fact that I killed a plant because I put something in, like, what if I overuse it or something and somehow it does cause an issue? That would really bother me and upset me because I'm anxious like that and I worry about stuff like that. And I wouldn't want you know, to be responsible for hurting my plant because of the chemical. So instead of using it about, I want to say it says every two months, I want to say that I use them every three to six months. And then I, I spray my plants and I keep them clean otherwise. And I, I take my time with them and I check them and make sure that they're okay. Um, like I said, I don't want to have to handle poison that much either or have it out in my house or around me or anything like that. There's nobody home, there's nobody around, nobody's going to be affected by it, but I still don't want to use chemicals and poisons like that very much. Like this just that's just me. And I'm sure there's lots of other parents and people who aren't even parents who you're just like, I just don't want chemicals on me. <laughs> I don't want to get the dirt on my stuff. And like if you have pets that eat the dirt in your plants and you know you can't keep your planters up away from your pets, don't use that stuff. All right. Use all natural methods, find other ways. This is not gonna help you. It's gonna make your 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 pet really sick and it might even kill them. All right, not okay. You've got to be careful with your pets. It's, you know, they're your fur babies. You have real babies and fur babies, and they're all babies, and they're yours, and you have to protect them. What if, like, you have a weird <laughs> friend who likes to eat the leaves off of plants? You never know. Crazy things happen, and it's so much easier to just be like, no, I'm just not going to do that, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep everybody in my household and family and friend circle safe from a toxic thing that I don't need to accidentally get them somehow. Um, anyway, you guys have a great day. I hope this was helpful to somebody. This is a really cool plant. My, my, I didn't realize that this was also the silver, uh, the sterling silver synapsis. I just found that today. I hadn't, hadn't read that, seen that, or heard that anywhere. I feel you. I see you tiny little mini bugs. All right. Good. I'm going to be treating that guy soon. Everybody have a great day. Thank you for watching.